Hi, it's Carolyn. I'm here to help you learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes. And in this video, I'm showing you how I make my most famous pound cake tester boxes. And in case you missed it, a few months ago, I did release my pound cake recipe ebook, which I am going to link down in the description for you. And in that recipe book, there are 12 pound cake recipes and eight glaze recipes. And I'm telling you, everyone loves them. Everyone who has ever tried these loves them so much and I'm so excited that I can finally share them with you. So like I said, I'm making my pound cake tester boxes and I do this for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter. And I just want to show you my whole process of how I glaze the cakes, cut them up, and assemble these boxes. And I will also show you how I ship them as well. So let's get started. To start, I do bake all of the cakes, of course, and I do have a video that is linked in my recipe ebook that you can view that I go through the whole process of how I bake these cakes. So I take some out and I put other ones in. I let them cool for 20 minutes. Then I flip it upside down on a piece of food safe plastic. I wrap it up and I always label the flavor because you will never remember. So always label the flavors. And then I stick it in the freezer and I like to freeze them overnight and I let them completely freeze before I stack them so they don't get squished. And then when I thaw them, I put them on cooling racks so the water, any condensation can drip through. But I thawed these for about seven or eight hours before I started to glaze them. I get these plastic cake domes at a local restaurant store or I also get them online. So I will find them and link them below. Those are the ones I use for the larges and I use these half containers for the small. I actually like that bra the black bottom. For some reason, the large ones used to have the black bottom and this time they came clear. I just think it looks better with the black bottom, but uh, whatever, they both work. So what I like to do is have a bunch of the large trays because I'm going to glaze the cakes and then set them on the trays. So I have about, I don't know, I need about like 20 of them. So I have them set aside and let's glaze the cakes. Here's my little setup to glaze. I have a cutting board with something propped on the one side so it can angle down into the sink and I just have some paper towels around it to catch any overspill. And I got my vanilla cake. You can't tell it it's vanilla, but it's vanilla. I'm unwrapping it and I'm putting the cake on the cutting board. And then I have this vanilla glaze. I just dye them uh, different colors to make it look pretty. And I am pouring the glaze all over this cake. Now these recipes are in that recipe ebook that is linked below. And I like to cover the entire thing. I just think it looks better when it's completely covered. You can drizzle it on top if you want. I just prefer to do it this way. So you can see that I'm scooping a little bit more glaze out of the bowl and then I'm using some of the glaze that's dripped down to the bottom and lifting it up around the cake. And I just wanna cover this entire cake with the pink vanilla glaze. So this is vanilla cake with vanilla glaze. And I try not to waste a lot of glaze. So that's why I'm like scooping it around the bottom of the cake and putting it back on top. <laughs> um, and also one recipe of glaze covers two whole cakes. And once the cake is completely covered, then I took one of those trays and I like to scoop a little bit of glaze and put it on the bottom. That way the cake isn't going to slide off the tray. The, the glaze will hold it adhere it to the tray so it doesn't move around. I have a spatula on one end and then I lift it up on the other end and just transfer that onto the tray. And I'm going to set that aside. And I did two vanilla cakes. So I'm just doing this again, pouring the rest of that pink glaze on top of here and making sure that I scoop out any excess glaze and completely cover this cake. And then again, I'm getting some excess glaze and putting it on the bottom of the tray so the cake does not slide around. Take a spatula underneath it and lift it up and move it to the tray and set that aside. And I'm taking any extra glaze that doesn't have crumbs in it and then pouring that extra pink glaze into this little container here. Save the glaze because I'm gonna use that to adhere the slices to the trays and let's set that aside. I'm doing the same thing for all of these cakes. Now, I glaze these cakes and I let them sit out, not covered, because I want the glaze to uh, crust 
that way it's not going to get messed up when I cut them and handle them. So these cakes probably sat out for up to three hours before I started cutting them. So I'm just doing the same thing for all of the colors. And look how pretty these are. They're so colorful. You could tell the glaze is no longer wet. The glaze has crusted. So now I can handle these without messing it up. So with the smalls, I'm making 16 smalls. So I have 16 half trays set out. And then I have my turntable with the piece of non-slip pad on here and a knife and don't come at me. This cutting wheel, I bought it 20 years ago and they no longer make it. So I, I'm sorry, I use this to cut all my cakes so I have to show it in my video, but it shows you where to cut a cake so you can get even slices. Somebody contact Wilton and tell them to, to make it again because um, I tried and they, I had no success. <laughs> so I'm putting the cake on top of that dividing wheel and I'm cutting 16 slices. Now, if you don't have a cutting wheel, you can just cut the cake in half into two slices and then half again so you have four slices and half again so you have eight and then in half again so you have 16. So you don't necessarily need this. It really is the best tool. If anybody knows where you can get something like that little cutting wheel, please put it in the comments so we can help each other out. But I, I did contact Wilton before and I asked them and nobody got back to me. <laughs> but I really do love that. So once I have 16 slices, I have my pink glaze here and I'm lifting a slice out, flip it over. I'm scooping a little bit of glaze and putting on the bottom and then sticking it down onto the tray, making sure it's straight and then get another piece with some glaze underneath and stick that down. So you'll see me do it for all four of these. And then I did it for all of the other 12 trays that are, that I showed you earlier. And then I always rinse the trays because I can reuse that afterwards. So that was the tray that the pink was on. Now this is banana chocolate chip with peanut butter glaze. And I cut 16 slices out of this. I have my peanut butter glaze here and I'm lifting up a slice. Get some glaze underneath and stick that right next to the vanilla. And I'm doing that for all 16 and then I rinse that the tray that it was on and continue so now I'm doing the pumpkin with the cream cheese glaze and I will list all of my flavor combinations in the description for you this is lemon with lemon this is cinnamon swirl with cream cheese which is one of my favorites so good they're all really good this is spice with cream cheese and this is almond with almond and chocolate chip with chocolate glaze. So getting that glaze underneath the pieces really helps keep them in place. And then I'm just taking that plastic dome and sticking it on top. And I start on one end and I kind of pull it down the other side to make sure that I don't squish the pieces of cake. Beautiful. And then I'm shipping two of these. So I have that food safe plastic. And do you see how I'm bunching this? I'm, I'm like pulling the plastic up. So that way, when I put the lid on, it's not going to squish the pieces. It's very important that you do that. So I want to bunch the plastic up and then wrap it underneath. And I will continue that later. So I'll show you how I ship the cakes. But now I'm doing the large cake. So this one, I get 10 slices. And I always rinse the knife when crumbs start to stick to it so I can get cleaner slices. But I'm doing 10 slices in the large and I did 16 slices in the small. So again, lift it up with my knife, get a little bit underneath and stick that down. And I have 10 of these large trays set up. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for all of the flavors. And again, this is the banana chocolate chip with peanut butter glaze. And I, you see how I push the pieces next to each other. So this is the lemon with the lemon glaze. Delicious. And this one is banana with Nutella glaze. This one is only in my large box because my large box has two flavors that are not in the small. And this one is wedding bouquet cake with wedding bouquet flavoring. It's delicious. And you see how that final piece fits in there perfectly. And again, I'm gonna take that plastic dome and press it down to seal. Perfect. 
Look how beautiful that is. And I'm shipping this one. So again, I'm loosely laying this plastic on top and then I'm bunching it up. I'm pulling it in so I don't squish the pieces when I put that plastic dome on top. So this one I'm going to ship. So once that plastic is in the right position, then I start on one end and press that all the way down, make sure that's sealed. And then I'm going to tuck the plastic underneath. Doing it this way helps keep the cake sealed to the tray so it won't move around in shipment. Now I had these little labels that I put on all the boxes telling everybody what flavors they are and I will link that in the description for you. And I also printed out these Happy Thanksgiving labels just to make it look fun and festive. This is a paper cutter and I love this thing. I will link this in the description. That way I get straight cuts on all of these. And I need to trim these so they fit on the boxes. So that's a little too wide, so I have to trim it down on the sides as well. And that looks really good. So I want to cut these little Happy Thanksgiving labels as well. I really do love this tool. It is perfect to get straight edges on your cuts. Now this is a small tester box that I'm going to ship. Remember, I wrapped that bottom part with the plastic and tucked it underneath. I'm taping this to the very front and then I tape my business card and then put the Happy Thanksgiving label over my business card and then I'm pulling that plastic on top of it. I got a really long piece of the plastic and I cut it with the slider cutter and then I'm tucking one end underneath and tucking the other end. Doing it like this is going to prevent the lid from lifting off. So I turn it a quarter turn and then I do the same thing, wrapping the entire thing in plastic. And you could turn this thing upside down. It ain't going nowhere. Like it, it is really well wrapped up in there. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the large. So that's the one that I wrapped up in plastic and then I put the dome on. And I have separate labels for the large container because there are different flavors in the large one. And then I like to tape that to the top and then put my card down and then put the Happy Thanksgiving label on top of it. And I want to do the same thing to wrap this up. I'm going to pull the plastic over the top and make sure the plastic is really long and then I'm going to cut it and tuck one end underneath and then the other. And this is again going to help prevent the lid from lifting off. I turned it a quarter turn and then I'm doing it again with another piece of plastic. Lift it up, stick one end under, and then the other end under and that sucker ain't going nowhere everything is wrapped up nice and tight in there so it'll be fine during shipping now i'm shipping this usps i have a large flat rate box for the large pound cake tester i tape the bottom and then this fits perfectly in this box so i don't need to pack it up with anything else because it doesn't shift around i'm going to tape the top of this down and I pre-printed these labels that I just have these stickers and I put the label on here and that looks good. Now for the smaller one, I use the medium flat rate box and I'm going to tape the bottom of this. And then this one, when I put it in here, it does shift. So you have to pack it with stuff. Whenever I get anything from Amazon, I always save these little packing bags to use for when I make pound cakes. <laughs> so I have a whole trash bag full of them. I never throw them out. So you can use like bags or newspaper or whatever. Does anyone get newspapers anymore? But <laughs> And here are all the pound cakes that I'm not shipping. So they're not wrapped in the plastic. They're just on the tray with the dome on top. And then I want to tape all of these little instructions to all of them. So I have different instructions for the small than I do for the large. And I want to make sure that I put the right one on the right box. And then I put my business cards down and tape them down. And then I have the Happy Thanksgiving logo that I put or label that I put down on all of the boxes and then tape that down on all of them. And here are all my pound cake tester boxes. Look how beautiful they are. And they're even more delicious. So here you go, how amazing do these look? And they smell even better. Let me put these down. So there's a couple things that I wanna say about these. And again, a reminder, I do have a link to purchase the pound cake recipe ebook and that is down in the description. So I started baking these on a Friday and I baked into a Saturday. I always bake and freeze my pound cakes. I think they turn out so much better when you freeze them. Them, when you freeze them. <laughs> 
So I like to bake over two days. That way I can freeze the first batch and get them really frozen overnight so the next day I can stack them on top of each other. Do not stack warm pound cakes on top of each other in the freezer because they're gonna get crushed. I only stack them once they're completely frozen. So I thawed them, I took them out of the freezer on Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and I let them thaw for probably like seven hours or so. And then at 3 p.m. I started to glaze them. I do ne I never glaze the frozen cakes. I always give them time to thaw and come to room temperature first. And then the glazing took about three hours to glaze all of them and it was another two hours to cut them up and assemble the boxes. But I wanted to have everything done on Sunday because I had to ship them out on Monday and I have pickups on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thanksgiving is Thursday. And I do let people know that I can't guarantee shipping by Thanksgiving. There's some zones that are further away from me. There's three zones I believe with USPS and if it is too far away, it's gonna get there on a Friday. I always let people know that I can't guarantee delivery by Thanksgiving. It is not your fault if it does not get there in time. So I just like to let them know that just in case something happens in transit. And these can last for about a week at room temperature. And I do have instructions on here. I will link my instructions below. You can individually wrap each piece and freeze them as well. And they last really long frozen. I've had a couple slices that were in the freezer for uh, maybe it was like a month and a half and it was still really good. So, so it freezes really well. And to keep track of all my orders, I just use an Excel spreadsheet. I'm sure there are other programs out there or apps out there that you can use, but I will also link my spreadsheet below for you. So as of 2023, I charge $40 for the small and $70 for the large. The small has eight pieces. You can cut them into two, so the small feeds up to 16, and the large has 10 pieces, and you can cut each one into three, so the large feeds up to 30. And I know I've said that I've made over $50,000 since I started selling these, and here's how I average it out. Every time I make my pound cakes, I make at least $1,000, if not more. I make them about three times a year, and I've been doing it for over 15 years. So I'm telling you, these pound cakes are so delicious. People go crazy over them. And I highly recommend that you get the recipe book. And just a little note, I don't only do the testers, I do regular pound cake flavors. So this one is just a cinnamon, swirl a cinnamon swirl with the cream cheese and this one is vanilla with vanilla and for these i charge thirty dollars for a half and fifty dollars for a whole so i think that's it i really hope you enjoyed this video and you got some ideas for little dessert treats that you can offer if you get the book and you try out the pound cakes please let me know how you like it i'm telling you they're always a big hit whenever i bring these to parties and just a reminder, I do have a Cake Academy membership program where I can help you elevate your cakes to the next level. I will link all that information in the description. Please like this video if you liked it. And if you are enjoying my tutorials, I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee. My link is down below. And I would love it if you would keep in touch on socials and you could check out my website. And if you want to stick around, you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.